All right, I am playing with my smoke layer, this ring of smoke, and I'm selecting within this folder individual ellipses to change their color to this gray. But it can go pretty fast. And I might in this way have like foreground and background smoke. But I don't want to have too much complexity of color because I always want it to feel consistent with single shapes. Now, that's an interesting shape there, these two colors. What if I want that one on top? Which I'm not sure if I do, actually. What I can do is do Command Right Bracket to move it up through the layers that's on top but I kind of like that and then maybe I will fill this one and maybe I'll move that one on top and I might as well change this one too. okay next Let's see, if I turn off my onion skinning, what do I have? These are the vector shapes I've made. If I get distracted by this checkerboard, I can create a new layer at the bottom. And I create a new layer by clicking on a little post-it icon in the corner of the layer window, or by going to layer, new layer. And then I'm going to fill it with white. This will get turned off at the end, but it just helps me build. So I say edit, fill, and we always do this when we want 100% perfect white, 100% perfect black, or 100% perfect middle gray, which we'll need throughout the class. So we go to edit fill, and then we choose white at 100% normal everything. All right, and then I use my onion skinning for everything else, right, to show me what else I can add. So I had these little pieces of kind of floating I was thinking them as, as little uh, chunks of ash, this black circle. So I can try adding that. The ellipse tool. Oops. But I want to make sure it goes on top of my top shape. So I'm going to click on the folder and then use my ellipse tool. Start it and then hold shift down to get it perfectly circular. And then fill it with a dark color. I'll just use black for now and then move it into place with the move tool. So we're just using the, sh the shape tools and the move tool, and then everything else is a technique. And then I can duplicate it, Command J, Option Command T, Transform, so it duplicates a technique, trans free transform is a technique, and I'm going to change its color to light gray, and then I'm gonna shrink it down, Option Command T, and if I want to shrink it towards the middle rather than towards one corner, I hold down Option while I do it. I can layer that up. Turn off my onion skin. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. And then I'll make a duplicate of that. And then I'll fill that with a dark gray. And notice it's the exact same size. There's a whole lot of repetition in graphic design. So when we're doing flat graphics like emojis, you don't have to recreate everything. It's better to just copy and paste and move around because that gives a, a unity to everything in the design. If I decide I ever want to change the color, I can just double click and alter the color a little bit. So I'll kind of deaden this pink. And then if I want to match it here, I can just steal it directly from what I chose before. Okay, this looks very depressing. And I don't have well, it's really going to tell my story yet, right? This is just like a person in a funk. So I need more space. If I'm going to do a book that then has flames coming from it, it's going to be fun. But I need more space. So what do I do? I go to image, and I look, don't go to image size, which is how you change the pixels. Instead, I go to canvas size. This is how you change the pixel space, the canvas. And I change it to inches. Right now I have 10 by 13. I'm going to change the height to 14 inches. As long as it's bigger than 8 by 10, you're fine. 
And then I'm going to grow it from the bottom because I don't need anything down here. So I want it, I want it to add to the top. So I, I anchor it at the bottom. Then I say, okay, I can do command zero to fit it all on the screen. I can go back to my flat white layer and say, edit fill with white again. Just so I don't have to see that, that pixel, that blank grid. And now I've got space. Now it's a good time to save it. And I can just do command S or file save and it will update where I've been saving it. And I can see that right there. Okay. Yep. I double clicked it and I opened it in Photoshop. So I don't need that. All right. So now a book. So I can make a book just with these basic shapes. Start with a rectangle, right? But I want the spine of a book open like a shallow V. So I can make one edge of the book like this. And then if I want to round it out, like a lot of emojis, they don't have just straight rectangles. They round out the edges. What do I do? Option Command T, right click, warp. Zoom into it because this is tricky. But we're going to round out this edge just by dragging on these, these are called Bezier curves for those anchor points at the corner. Later when we learn vector design, we can always add anchor points to make these curves like more believable and shallower. But right now, I'm just going to try to get them to be really even. <coughs> Excuse me, gosh. And if I use the move tool, and I have these rulers that are off to the side, and if you don't see those rulers, hit Command R. They'll turn them on and off. I can click on the ruler with the move tool and bring in a guide. And that will help show me that everything is fairly clean and symmetrical. Then I can do it on the other side. So Option Command T, right click, warp it, drag these Bezier handle curves, make them straight and move them out on both sides the same amount. I think I want them about here. So I can use a guide. This is where graphics, when you want them like clean and symmetrical, they get very exacting. So that's one way I can do it. And I get a nice rounded kind of noodle shape. The other way I can do it is as a compound shape, right? I can build a rectangle and then I can build two circles that fit perfectly within it. And the guides can help me with that. The guides will actually stick to your vector shapes. So now when I go to the ellipse tool and I click and drag and hold down shift, it will give me a perfect circle that fits within those two borders. And then I just move it until it's even, right? And then I can duplicate that, Command J, and then move it. It will stick with the guides until it's even. So here's the difference, though. This one is all one vector path, which means that I can warp it if I want. This is a combination of multiple vectors. So what do I do? I select all three of them, and I put them into a folder. In Photoshop, it's called a group, right? And then I can do various things in transforming the group. Like I can rotate. I can do everything except warp. So if you need to curve a rectangle, which I don't need to for a book. You know, this is what I need for a book. I need a spine like this that I can rotate. I want to have that book kind of nested in the clouds here. Maybe a little bit thicker. Good. And then I want to duplicate that. It will duplicate with Command J the entire folder and then Option Command T. And then I want to right click and flip it horizontally. Whoops, but it didn't do all of it. Interesting. We did the two circles, but not the bar in between. So I get this whole folder and then duplicate it. And then Option Command T. 
and then right click flip horizontally huh what's going on and this is why we we learn very well so i'm going to do something else instead of duplicating the folder i'm going to open it up select everything inside and duplicate that command j so i can see that it's all gone together and then option command t and then right click and then say flip horizontally what in the world <laughs> i am baffled Hmm, what is going on? And PhotoP does this sometimes because it lags sometimes and it does things that are odd and it takes a little while to understand them. So I'm, well, this should work. Command J, let's turn this one off. Let's turn this one off. So I've got a duplicate. I'm going to select the whole thing. I'm going to do edit, free transform. Then I'm going to right click and say flip horizontally. Interesting. It just can't change the angle of that bar. But that should be simple enough. I can take that bar. I'm not sure why it can't flip it. It can in Photoshop and then do option command T and then I'm simply going to flip that vertically which didn't work horizontally didn't work so maybe I have to just rotate it myself like so well that's a pain but it can be done instead I think I'm just going to do it this way Hold on. turn off i'm going to use this other asset that i made just by warping one and then that's a little bit easier for photo p to handle and i can tilt it and shrink it down and transform its angle and get the other spine of the book and then i need I think a triangle for the base of the book. So I'm going to use for the first time the parametric shape and I'm going to choose three sides, make a triangle. It's going to be an equilateral triangle, but then you can always warp it or distort it or scale it. So now I'm going to do option command T and I am going to go right to warping it and start softening those points to make the spine and then bring this one all the way down and even fold it over on itself so it becomes like a gumdrop shape then hit return and then option command t again just to scale it so i get the spine of the book if i want to soften those curves again i can even bend them around so that they're almost just full curves. So I also could have done this by transforming an ellipse. So warp is a very powerful technique for transforming your vector shapes. And if you're worried about symmetry, here's a nice trick. You can always Take an object, but you're not quite sure it's symmetrical. You can duplicate it, Command J, and then you can Option Command T, free transform it, and flip it horizontally on itself. And then just spread it out a little bit so that it is perfectly symmetrical in the compound. So the two of them together make a shape that's perfectly symmetrical. So that's the spine of my book. So now I need pages, right? So I'm going to use the rectangle again, make a nice thick bunch of pages, and I'm going to make it white, or off-white probably. 
I wouldn't recommend using solid 